Hello and welcome back to my channel. I probably look like I just rolled out of bed, but I didn't want to put that much effort into my appearance because I'm about to slather Vaseline all over my face. I had a lot of plans for 2020, and as the year progressed, they all started dropping like flies. One of my plans was to make a new short horror film that I wrote. I was extremely excited about it. This particular short film would require prosthetics, but because of COVID, hiring someone to do prosthetics isn't that simple and not very prudent, so I decided to teach myself. So in order to make really good prosthetics, you want it to be form-fitting to the actor's face. Since I will be in the short film, the prosthetics need to go on me, and so I need to make a cast of my face. So I have watched like 100 hours of SFX makeup tutorials. So I am making a face cast using plaster. So this is plaster that is specifically designed to be in contact with human skin. It's non-toxic, etc. And I did a patch test just to make sure that there was not going to be any sort of reaction and we are good to go. I still really want to make this short film, but we have to see if I am at all able to do prosthetics. And I thought maybe you guys would find this interesting just a little behind the scenes look at my learning process because this upcoming winter looks like grounds for depression and I'm going to do everything I can to stay busy and a lot of that will be crafts and making things. So hopefully you guys find that interesting. <laughs> Step one is to put plastic wrap to cover my hairline. I am just doing a face cast, not a head cast, so I don't need to worry about the back of my head. I have a mirror right here. I don't know if that's even in the frame, but I have to make it like this. Something like that. This looks so stupid. Okay. Hide your husbands, hide your boyfriends. <laughs> I'm gonna put a little bit of tape here. Um, I don't know about this all though. Saran wrap sticks to saran wrap, right? Kind of worked. All right, looking good, ready to hit the town. Now it's time for the part that I've been dreading, which is putting Vaseline all over my face because when Removing the plaster, you know, you're not going to want to rip out all of your hair. <laughs> like I'm getting ready for like a slip and slide competition. <laughs> Great. This feels wonderful. All right. Now it's time for the plaster strips. Just getting a bunch ready. I don't know how much I'm going to need, but I'd rather have too much than have to, you know, stop in the middle and cut more. Okay. So you want to dip it in warm water and stick it on. I don't know, this is how they did it in the tutorials. And it's all over me. First of all, look at my face. <laughs> Second of all, I don't know about this. I just don't know how this is gonna translate really because look at, it's like separate here. So maybe I need to, I don't know. Should I maybe like take this stuff off my head before I continue talking to you? I look like uh, Jack Nicholson at the end of The Shining. I think I'm gonna touch up a few spots just because you know, you can tell there's like a hole here. It's a little transparent here. Um, so I'm gonna add those because eventually I'm gonna be pouring plaster into this and I don't want it to seep through. The inside looks super weird and I really don't know how this is gonna turn out. Like there's, there are these harsh lines of the different features of my face. This is what worries me. But I think maybe I'll just buff it out once I have the actual plaster and just hope for the best. This is my first time ever doing this, so. All right, so I'm going to let this dry for an indefinite amount of time. Hello again. It is now a few hours later. This is our friend. I still have Vaseline on my face, so if I'm really shiny, that's why. Also, the AC is off to film this. It's still kind of, it feels like it's wet, but I think maybe it's just cold, like from the air conditioner or something. Regardless, I have no patience and I'd like to continue. Hopefully, it's good enough to pour the plaster into. So first, I'm just trying to get any like little debris out that I can without actually like, I don't wanna to scrape too hard. It's fine. So I'm going to mix water with plaster of Paris, 
pour it in, let it sit for like 24 hours, and then what comes out of that is going to be essentially, you know, my face. And upon that is what I can then eventually build prosthetics. So step one is put some oil in here so that eventually when the plaster sets, like tomorrow, I'll be able to take it out more easily. This is like the weird inverse of my face. I saw someone use olive oil. I'm gonna use some olive oil. Seems kind of weird, but everybody's doing it these days. Oh God. Okay. Eventually we're going to sand down the finished product, so it doesn't really matter if there are like little imperfections, but I'll just try to get it as good as I can do. The nose is the most important part for my project, so I wanna make sure I spend some extra time on it. If I were to do this again, I'd probably put more plaster farther back because right now it's a sort of shallow face. So pouring the plaster and I'm gonna to have to be very aware of the lowest boundary here. So I'm gonna just get all of the excess out. Here she is again. So I have an old box with old clothes in it. All right, I'm gonna put this here like this. Next, I have to mix water and plaster of Paris. One part water, two parts plaster of Paris. I'm going to mix it in this old container of non-fat Greek yogurt that I used for making homemade tzatziki. I'm, I'm really good at pouring. This is growing great for me. Just splashed my face. I'm going to start with the important bits and really get it smooth. Okay. <laughs> beautiful. I say beautiful, then like tomorrow we're gonna take it out and it's gonna look like a horrifying monster, but so now I have 24 hours of excruciating anticipation, but you guys are lucky because I can just snap my fingers and it'll be tomorrow. Time parkour. It's now the next day. This is our friend. It's been 24 hours. I think it's time to start ripping this stuff off and see what we have because I do not have high hopes. I may need to redo this whole thing. Oh boy. It's like, I'm unwrapping my own face. So this is a really strange experience. This is really weird. It's sort of like, this is something you'd see in a museum, you know, of a historical figure, a life mask. That's what this is. This is a life mask. I made my own life mask. You know, you can never really see yourself as other people see you. Not that this, I hope, is <laughs> not how other people see me. This is obviously not perfect. It has quite a few imperfections on it, but that'll do, pig. That'll do. So I'm going to need to fix the small imperfections and we'll see what we come up with. I have this brush. I'm gonna use this part to get into these little areas. This is as good as I can get it. That looks horrifying. It's not great, but will it serve its purpose? I don't know, but I have zero patience and I don't really know how much better it's going to get. So I'm going to seal this puppy up. We're going to do that with wood glue. So the wood glue is going to essentially seal this completely. We're going to do a few layers, letting it dry in between each layer. This is the finished product. It's a me. Bridget. <laughs> so I did five to six layers of wood glue, letting it dry in between each one. So it's completely dry now. And this is how it turned out. Is it perfect? No, this is not master craftsmanship by any stretch of the imagination. I had no patience when mixing the water and plaster of Paris. And you can see that there are lots of air bubbles and you know, uneven bits. And I couldn't really smooth those out with the sandpaper as much as I would have liked. So I think I could have done this a lot better, <laughs> a lot better. I think the nose turned out okay, which is what I really needed it for because I plan to build nose prosthetics. So I think we did okay. The chin I feel like is too big because I think that when I first put plaster strips on, I think my mouth was open a little bit, like just too relaxed rather than closed. So my chin looks like, like this face looks longer than my face, but maybe we can still 
build upon it and it would work for my own chin. Again, it's not perfect. I rushed through a lot of it, but I think it'll get the job done for my short film that I'm eventually going to build prosthetics for. And also the entire process has been completely surreal. While this was drying, it's such a bizarre experience to, you know, be walking to the kitchen and look down and see my face or, you know, walking to the living room and my face is peeking out of a box. It's the weirdest thing. I really recommend this experience to anyone, especially if you're bored this upcoming winter. And also it made me think about all of the life masks and death masks I've seen online or in museums of historical figures because this is me, you know, this is, you know, the curvature of my face and you can see my bone structure and everything. But while objectively this is me, it doesn't really capture me. And that's kind of devastating to know that all of the life masks and death masks that I've seen while that's what they looked like, it's not really what they looked like because what makes a person? In person, you see the, you know, the way they carry themselves, the way they part their hair, their mannerisms, the way they smile, just everything about them, all of their expressions. And so even if I were to finally see, you know, what Anne Boleyn looked like in person, if there were a life mask of Anne Boleyn, I'd only know so much. I still wouldn't be able to see the way she carried herself. And that's a tragedy. <laughs> and that is what I wish I could just be in a room with every historical figure and just watch them. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a little bit different than stuff I've done before, but I thought I would just film this whole process. If you enjoyed it, please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me leave a comment below. If you're new here, feel free to subscribe and we will see you next time. <laughs>